Hello, everyone, and welcome to Game 3 and the final game for today's streaming from War Machine Weekend 2017, the Champions event. I'm talking like Marlon Grissel a little bit. I don't know why. Hey. It's been a long day, but that's where we are. <laughs> that's where you are. I'm, uh, I'm Will Schick. I'm Doug Seacat. And we are here to be your official voice of the final game in this championship day. We're going to finish up tomorrow with the two final matches. Uh, but that said, we've got a really exciting match. Yeah. I'm excited. Yeah, I am, this is a good I one. I am friggin' thrilled. <laughs> I am friggin' thrilled at this one. Yeah. Because how often do you see Magnus 2 go up against Aurora? Yeah, this is this is new. This is After different. this stream, it's going to be all the time. That's <laughs> the answer the to that question. Yeah. It's going to be every time. I think it's going to be a fun a fun clash. That's right. So we've got Charles Soong uh, with uh, Magnus the Warlord. Yeah. So Magnus 2 uh, taking on Jesse Farmer with uh, Aurora the Newman of Areogenesis. Mm -hmm. uh, Nicely said, yeah, sir. Isn't that, isn't, that, isn't that beautiful? <laughs> beautiful. All right. So we're having fun. Uh, they are doing Recon 2. Yes. I'd tell you to tell us a little bit about Recon 2, Doug, but I'm not going to do that to <laughs> no, you. No, please don't. So there Recon, are some scenario boxes and There things. are some scenario boxes. Yeah. So unlike the game that you and Pagani <laughs> did uh, yeah. last game, uh, this one favors the battle group. Okay. Because you've got the, you've got the rectangular zone, so this going to be scored by Warcasters, Warjacks, Warbeasts, uh, and the like. Uh, there's going to be some objectives on the table. That's exciting. Pagani's laughing over there. So He's, Magnus might have a slight advantage Magnus with his jack Magnus might have a slight heavy advantage list. with his jack-heavy army. Um, you've also got flags, though, so solos will come into play here. Okay. Um, lots of good stuff. Obviously, you want to score five or more CPs uh, than your opponent uh, or have the most CPs at the end of the seventh round when the game ends or, of course, eliminate the opposing Warcaster or Warlock. Sure. Let's go back to the table really quick, and we'll talk a little bit about the list as our players are getting set up. So, as you mentioned, the Magnus the Warlord list, uh, this thing's got all the nomads. Nomads all for days. All the nomads. It's, uh, it's, a very, it's a very nomadic list. Yeah, this is good. Five of them, exactly. So, Magnus the Warlord, five nomads. This one feels five right. Five of them. That feels right to does me. Does it feel right? <laughs> yes, it does. Uh, I like it. He's got a freebooter and a buccaneer in his list. It is using the Irregulars theme force. Um, and then it's pretty much a who's who of all of the solos and name characters. I, I like it. It feels it Mercs. feels good. You know, we've so, got Orin Midwinter. Yeah, yeah. We've got Eris. We've got Anastasia Debray. Mm -hmm. We've got Hutchuck. Yep. We've got Ragman. Yep. You got two Horgenhold artillery cores just to blow some stuff up from long distance. Right. And then you've got uh, two pairs of Chaosi Eliminators for the stabbing. Yeah. It feels yeah. like a good hodgepodge list like Magnus the Warlord might it, might dredge up throwing it, his money out there. It is absolutely a <laughs> he walked into a bar and was like, yo, I got a job. Yeah. <laughs> Who wants to get paid, son? Exactly. All right. And then yeah. on the convergence side, it's like all the dudes ever. Oh, we didn't even mention Ayana and Holt. We didn't. Ayana and Holt also in the list. <laughs> yeah. They were way at the bottom of the list. You can't <laughs> even see them. There we go. All right. So the convergence list, again using the clockwork uh, legions theme force. So you've got Aurora, uh, two inverters in her battle group, the four Enigma foundries, right. which, you know, if you're going to play Clockwork Legions, that's what you're going to do. Uh, Eilish Garrity, your your boy. Yeah, he's coming come in over with his now. Evil books. Just left the Grimkin, came over to the Convergence. Yeah. Well, he's got a lot to do. He's, he's got some he's lore got some to learn. Studying. Yeah. yeah. You've got three full units of uh, Clockwork Angels, so nine total angels, three full units of Obstructors. That's a lot of Obstructors. So just, you know, all, all the shield wall ever. A uh, full unit of reductors, and then you've got an OptiFX directive just for funsies. Yeah, sure. Why not? So, yeah, uh, definitely a, a very heavy and specialized, like, list in the Magnus theme versus just the swarm of everything ever. And that's going to be a really aggressive uh, Aurora list, right? Like, yeah. they're just going to come flying across the table. I mean, you know, you're going to use the Angels to uh, harry and harass kind of as the front line. You've got this really strong back play. Yeah. I don't know what Dallas is. Dallas he's, making the he's, he's making he's making flying. Birds? That that was like, his clockwork angel like, I gesture. I don't know. I, don't, I think he wants. I think he wants the sound effects. Yeah, that's, <laughs> there he wants we to know go. What the angels sound yeah, like. Yeah, what does it sound like when the what angels? Angel, are the angels sound like this. Oh, hold on, hold on. Fail. My machine. I know. It's because of the anticipation. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> that's. The, <laughs> that, that was an angel swooping down in the sky. Okay, all right. right. There. They're raptors, man. <laughs> yeah, they you know they can just make that happen. Yeah, it's just exactly. the clockwork squeaking. They have a little they have a little like gearbox in them. So I'm thinking that this particular situation is 
Aurora is on a recruitment drive oh, for I Magnus. See. Ma Magnus is going to get yeah. like wounded and okay. then brought into the convergence. And then, and then he's going to get like he's going to get clockwork warrior. <laughs> he's going to get clockwork. Yeah. I see. So you can see uh, Jesse's taking his advanced move with all of his shield wall units, which is basically everything. Right. Uh, so they're all going to get a move up. They're starting in shield wall, of course, because why wouldn't you? Yeah, no, I, I don't know that Magnus really wants to. I, he's like I don't think he wants anyway. to, but I think he'd be a good recruit for the conversion. you think he'd fit in because yeah. he's already working with one leg? He, he's, Doesn't he's, that make him an abomination well, to her, though? Yeah, but, you know. Because, I mean, that's like that's they, against their credo. They've already No, they've already said they can overlook that with, like, a warcaster when they're oh, bringing him in. Oh, I see. They were going to bring in Haley despite the one arm. Well, sure, but, I mean, then she <laughs> she kind of, like, she, she stiffed him. Well, that's what happened. So this they're taking a more forcible mm -hmm. recruitment approach this time. I and, see, uh, I see. They're <laughs> but coming I, after Magnus? They were like, well. Dude, he's really good with machines. He he's not quite as good as like Haley or Nemo, but you got to go down the list. You're like, we that's, tried Haley, we tried Nemo. That's maybe Magnus. So effectively, what they did is they went to the grocery store and they went, we're gonna get we're gonna we, get like a need, nice kale, yeah, for a salad. Sure. And then they were like, oh, they're all out of kale. Well, I guess we'll get some iceberg lettuce, <laughs> right? Because we'll still have our salad. And they were like, no, no, we're out of iceberg too. And they're like, all right. Screw it, arugula? we're just gonna get a bag of Doritos. I think it's arugula. No, it's Doritos. <laughs> Magnus right. is the bag of Doritos. They're just like, screw the diet. I we're just taking whatever we can get at this you're point. You're being real cynical matter. toward Magnus. He is a genius. What? He is a mechanical genius. Is he a mechanical genius? Yes, he is. His stuff used to blow up. But he also had arc nodes in his jacks that he made in like a shop in his garage right. without any of the cool parts. I don't think the Convergence wants garage I'm shop just saying work they, caster. They know... Like, that's the, not. They know that Magnus, if you give him the right gear and a good workshop, he can make some good stuff. No, he he's makes been working out of like uh, you know a junkyard for a while, right? And making amazing stuff. I don't think that I would call it amazing at all. I well, mean, I, despite he's, your he's cynicism, he's like the guy who takes like the gremlin, cuts it in half, and <laughs> sticks it to like no, a Toyota no, no, no. That's that's Arcadius. Like, that's Arcadius, this. who's also yeah. a good potential recruit. That that could happen I later don't too. Think they're going to take Arcadius. Arcadius or Magnus, either one be perfectly good. Arcadius is going to be like, I got an idea for your gears. Make them out of skin. <laughs> what if we had a lot of pigs that were made out of machines? All right, <laughs> like, but you no, know, we're missing pork. Grease. But anyway, I, I am I am bothered by your your lack of respect for Magnus's. Genius. I'm not saying that it's it's lack of respect. I'm just saying like if I'm the convergence, I'm sure. rolling in on this guy. I'm like, all right, well I'm apparently I just need a date to the prom. Well, just keep in I mind, I can't go alone. I'm not going with my aunt. Well, again, keep in okay? mind, this isn't Directrix coming in. This is Aurora. She's younger. She's just trying to make a mark, bring in some good. Yeah, meat. yeah. So she doesn't know better is what you're saying. Like she, <laughs> she lacks any kind of intelligence no, to make no, smart no. decisions. I'm telling you, Magnus would be really good. I don't think that he would be. I yeah. think he'd be awful. <laughs> All right. So our players are kicking things off yes. after after our important debate. Expect much more of this. <laughs> this is really this is what it's you've where, come here. That's where it's all out. So what do you think of the field positioning here? Well, I mean, uh, right now it looks like Jesse's still kind of measuring out his first turns. Oh, here comes a run. So he's just going to let go of the shield wall on the first unit of obstructors. He's running forward. Uh, so aggressive play, obviously, like you know, like we've seen in these scenario plays, getting forward, pushing up, it's yeah. important. Um, and he's got the Enigma foundries and the ability to recurse, like to recurse his, his uh, models. To right. Do so if that. he has some minor losses, he yeah, can recover it, it from it. It doesn't really matter. I mean. In the last game we saw where there's only one unit of obstructors, and that was the first game of, of the day, Yeah, the unit of obstructors basically just came back at the end of the game because you can throw six more dudes on the table. It, and so now we have 30. Right. <laughs> and uh, I believe that what they're standing on there is a hill. So okay. you know, talking again about uh, kind of the terrain. So we have the wizard hut. The wizard hut, yes. Yep, and I'll draw a wizard here. Is that, do you think that's Orin Midwinter's place or? Oh uh, no, this is like, this is like a bearded wizard. What if See, it was, what if it was the ragman's and tower? And his hands, and he's casting lightning bolts down <laughs> on these people. <laughs> Get away from my hut! I think it, I think that's the ragman's tower. It's the ragman's tower? Yeah, yeah. No, it'd be a lot darker and grimmer. <laughs> uh, we you got don't know hill. what's in his basement. So we have a hill here. Subterranean basement. There's an <laughs> elevator right here. It goes down. Yeah. Uh, so an obstruction, obviously, in the house. Yes. You've the got metal house. Another hill actually going on here. So so there's a pretty good line of sight going on over the side, which we haven't seen most of the day on this table. You've and of course got the uh, obstruction here, forest up here, uh, and like I said, I'm pretty sure they're counting this as a hill, although that has been a forest in the past. But I don't see any trees on it. Um, so. So. 
the uh, the convergence army has more ranged attacks because all the angels have a ranged attack. Right, they'll right? have uh, their their math beams, as you call the them. Math beams, they assault yes. you with math. <laughs> um, but you can't math rays. You, you know, you can't discount uh, you can't discount the effectiveness of those. Uh, dwarven artillery That's true. pieces. They've got AOE four. There's, There's a lot, lot of bodies on the table. A lot of things lot they can that drift into. could be hurt from uh, from some artillery, <laughs> especially the Clockwork Angels, right? Uh, yeah, the Clockwork Angels for sure. The other thing too is that um, you know if you if you miss with the artillery and it goes behind the shield wall, right. all of a sudden that can be more beneficial to oh, you yeah. just in terms of doing damage. Sure. Um, you can catch more of the guys that way because you know they go to a fourteen. You need eights to kill them, right. as opposed to being eighteen up front needing twelves. Uh, on your blast damage, so that 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 obviously has a has a pretty big play into it. Yeah, and uh, and can make all of the difference. So sometimes you just want to miss. Right. And dwarves are great at that. They they hey have now. bad at, they have bad eyesight. <laughs> That's not true. From living in caves all the time. That is not true. They're very squinty, like this, Dallas is doing right now. There's some serious racism happening. It's not. It's not. <laughs> it's speciesist. It's just speciesism. <laughs> it's just a fact. Rule folk are fine, among the finest of mercenary warriors in the Iron Kingdom. I mean, that's fine, but they can't see anything. <laughs> they're they're basically like mole rats. That is not at all. They just true. run around in their tunnels. I'd like to see you talking this to, to Madhammer when he's. I mean, Madhammer is pure proof of this. He he's, miss. Are you saying that Gorton misses all the time? All the time, unless he's swinging with his hammer, he misses all the time. <laughs> Why do you think he's never gone epic, Doug? <laughs> oh, that that could still happen. Ah, uh, question. I've been lobbying for it for about ten years. <laughs> right. I mean, someday, maybe, never. <laughs> let's just let's just give up here. It's just not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Gordon is the best. That, that was my first caster, you know. I liked Gordon. I mean, you know, he was he's great. I'm just saying. So what's he, happening in the middle here? What do we got? Well, going on? so right now we've got we basically just got this aggressive first turn. Where the the line oh the line is getting pushed up yeah you know and and he's just gonna bait he's gonna bait Magnus try and to get some jacks. nomad charges get the nomad charges because he knows that honestly you know if the, if the nomads get like one or two it's gonna go to the Enigma Founders you got one two three four right here so he's got great coverage and all these front how, line casualties how far out can the uh, the Enigmas get the uh, their clockwork it's, friends it's pretty decent I want to say it's like eight or more inches. I haven't used an Enigma Foundry in a while because I'm not much of a Convergence guy. Let's I know it's a travesty. Let's check it out here. Let's see. So it's, uh, is it Command? It should be in Command. Yeah, in Command, so 10 inches. So, I oh, mean, that's, that's pretty huge. good. You got, yeah. a, you got a great spread there. Yeah. So really the trick, you know, the trick for, uh, the, trick for the Magnus Army here uh, for Charles is is going to be eliminating those those Enigma foundries as soon as he possibly can. Right. And to of course, shut down the the uh, the yeah, ability to regenerate his army. To to make to make casualties matter here. Yeah. Um, and not just have them repopulated on him. So we've got the uh, last but not least, it looks like the Optifex directives advancing up, staying within seven inches of the inverters, and that'll be the turn. So a good aggressive push. Uh, to start this and start getting into the zones now. The big difference, of course, is that, again, the rectangular zones, battle group only. Right. And so the conversions player doesn't have much to do in the in there. Right. But he has so many bodies to contest with that right. really, we've talked about this, we've talked about this strategy before a couple of times today, but if you can get one of your Enigma foundries on that flag, you can just keep feeding stuff in right. you know, over this way. And just start racking up points because the Magnus Army has a lot of hard hitting stuff, but it doesn't they're, have a ton of things to throw. Yeah, they're they're greatly to throw this way. <coughs> and those those nomads, although they're tough, they can't take a ton of damage. Uh, I mean, no, they can they can do all they, right. They they'll, can soak it up. They'll do they'll do pretty good. I mean, I guess uh, I guess you're right. The Convergence Army does have a lot of lower damaging attacks. <coughs> yeah, there's there's. You know, they've got the CMA. They can bring up those teleflails, those, <laughs> as uh, Pagani <laughs> pointed out before. <laughs> but Escort's going to be a big one here with the extra movement. So what is we the... Uh, Dallas doing lassoing tricks over there. I don't know what's <laughs> happening on. What does the Optifex uh, directive uh, do for them? I mean, are they sort of a repair so they, group? They, they can repair uh, in different matchups. They can give magical weapon, which is huge. 
what, so it's the sort of utility. Yeah, it's a very it's a utility unit. Right. Um, don't usually want to leave home without them for the most part. Right. But yeah, it's another big thing to consider when you're talking about the damage potential of the convergence army, and especially the those obstructors, is that field marshal and yielding from Magnus too. Like, makes those nomads extremely durable because they're already. What, is it, what does that do for them? So it's plus two arm. Oh, nice. Well engaged. Oh, okay. Um, and so you're looking at, you know. Yeah, nomads, that's not bad at nomads all. Nomads an 18. It's got, a, it's got a buckler, so it goes up to a 19. Unyielding takes it to a 21. So in melee, they're quite tough, actually. Really durable. Okay. Really durable. And they have, you know, they have an, an okay number of boxes with 30. I love nomads. I, I think yeah, they're they great. Are, they're they're, the they're one of my favorites when too. When it comes to when it comes to mercs, yeah, I like them to both nomads and mules. Mules would be fun uh, against this list right here. So we see a little bit of clarification going on on how the uh, checking on who, right, how so to get who can get Pathfinder here. So they did confirm that that green zone in the center there that I kind of thought might have been a hill because it didn't have trees on it. They just never put the trees on, so that is a forest. It's a forest, so that's rough terrain. So it is blocking line of sight, which is right. more important. So looking looking at threat ranges here. Uh, Jesse points out that he's he's threat 11 because he can trample if he needs to, even though he can't charge through the forest. Right. So he has some distance to get in. Does uh, Magnus's army have any way to grant Pathfinder and such? So, no. Doesn't look like Not it, Not right? really. Um, you've, got, you've got nothing on Magnus himself. That'll really do it. Iris obviously has Pathfinder herself, but that's not right. a huge deal. Uh, Anastasia can at least add some threat extension to it. Right. Um, with espionage. <clears throat> Although that one can be a little tricky to pull off. The other interesting thing about you know Charles's list is he has two ambush models. He's got Anastasia, obviously. Who's not oh, on okay. The table yet, and he's got Hutchuck. Oh, I and forgot Hutchuck was, Hutchuck was an ambusher. Is, is not a dude that you want coming into yeah, your he's, back zone. He's a hard hitter. And swinging his mace around. Yeah, Hutchuck's an interesting character. Uh, Introduced in Larry Korea's uh, Into the Storm. Hutchuck kind of reminds me, like, I think that he's, like, he's Gudrun's sober cousin. <laughs> yeah, they could be related. I could see that. He's clearly not good at, like, cheering up his, uh, you no. know, his cousin. No. Brew up some, maybe some... Uh, some like some, some bombs or something. Well, I'm, I'm thinking more like some um, something to kind of even out his mental state. Some antidepressants. So the other list, uh, there's some chat going on right now about Charles's choice in lists here. Sure. Um, the the Jesse's other list was a very typical Lucan heavy armor list. Right. And so um, whether Charles kind of. Put his faith in the Magnus list, knowing in hopes that he would wind up facing the heavy armor list or not. Charles' other list was a Shea list um, that featured the Commodore and and some other uh, mercenary shenanigans. So that so, might have done a little better really versus know. the Swarm yeah, Army. I, I, I didn't hear. I didn't get to hear the players talking about why they made the list selections they did. But certainly, uh, the Nomads would do very well against Lucan's kind of armor stacking right. abilities. Um, yeah, and, and I would definitely through. be worried if I was playing Magnus here of just getting overrun. Yeah, he's got a lot to chew through. He's got a lot to chew through, but again, he does have a lot of durability with that unyielding yeah, that's plus true. the nomads. Um, so it'll be interesting to see which side kind of wins out if uh, Jesse can can wear him down, get his inverters where he needs them to go. I, I have Clockwork Angel nightmares sometimes. Remembering back to a a, a list where they just murdered Nemo <laughs> like mercilessly. <laughs> they just shot him to death with math. I think they actually came in and stabbed him mm. to death, but. So we have but there's, I think they actually they, they kill you with math either way. It looks like we have a feet token on the table, and I believe that is a real feet token. Oh. All right, so it looks like the feet token is just a proxy marker.
So we see some mortars now. now raining devastation down. Now, given uh, Magnus II's feet, uh, that's one that could play a key role in, in limiting these guys, right? I uh, mean, if you, if you time it right. Killbox could certainly be interesting in this, where uh, you can basically lock them down from being able to move. Right. It's one of the stronger sort of like movement control feats, right? Yeah. The nice thing about it is because you get to choose two different table edges. Right. Um, and you can kind of like you can box them in in different ways. So you can use it, you know, you can use it to stop them from being able to advance forward, which can be really powerful because it stops the charge. Right. You can use it if you kind of try to force a flank to stop them from being able to come over. Um, so you you can you can kind of force your opponent into different situations, and the flexibility of it, and knowing how to use it, yeah, uh, can be pretty pretty clutch. Well, and I'd imagine, in especially uh, you know, useful in these some of these scenario games. Yes. I mean, it might not matter as much on this one. It'll, yeah. It, I mean, that's one of the reasons why I think you know Jesse. Not only does he have that recursion going, but also he needs to get forward so that he can't get locked out by killbox. Right. Thus far, uh, the mortars are doing their work pretty well. What have they they've chewed up? Uh, it looks like they've chewed up bit. about six. So we've got six six of the eight possible souls have wound up on uh, foundries, which means they are just going to kind of come back right. at some point. Unless you can eliminate the whole unit. Uh, that's the only way to really stop that from playing. So, so how got, hard are those foundries to take out? Could he... Our aim is artillery for him, and no, no, he's he's just chewing through dudes. Yeah, the foundries are way too far away. So we see the eliminators up at the top there in the north side of the table, just going to engage the, uh, running in to engage the angels. We see a nomad running up into the center of the table, screaming, "Come at me, bro!" and Jack. <laughs> Field Marshal Apparition could be interesting for the inverters. It gives them a little bit of an extra repositioning ability. Some nonlinear threat extension. Eris is moving up. Going to shoot something in the face. So Deadly Bolt needs a three to hit. Just straight murders. Uh, so straight murders a uh, obstructor. So now we've got two full Enigma founders at this point. Yeah. So on the one hand, you can't really argue with the effectiveness of uh, the list on Charles' side so far at dealing with this mass of infantry. Then on the other, you're like, well, Jesse's just going to put them all back <laughs> to play. Gonna, so. Yeah, they're going to come back. But I guess if you kill enough, you got those. Uh, no, although you have to kill all of them, <laughs> Doug. You, you, you have to pretty much, uh, you got to assault the fields in that one. Yeah. So what's the limit on bringing them back as far as range? Like, are they all going to be? They're going to be further back in the field, right? Uh, well, it kind of depends on where, where the, the unit the is. Foundries wind up. Yeah. Um, but obviously, you have to place each grunt completely within three inches of the founder itself. Right. And then it has to be within three inches of another model of its unit. So you're at least pushing them back, if nothing so else. So you you might be able to push them back, or you're drawing the Enigma foundry forward. Right. Uh, which can be problematic. Um, you know, the one kind of benefit to to Charles is that every model he kills isn't going to get combat action next turn. Right. That's true. So, you know, it's less teleflails. Less teleflails. <laughs> getting swung in the air like they just don't care. All right. So that's the end of uh, Charles's Charles's turn. Doing really good. So Aurora's going to upkeep admonition, which is on, I think, one of the inverters. We got our our entire uh, crew on the streaming side dancing, <laughs> like they are the ones with teleflails. <laughs> Everybody wants a teleflail. All right, and it looks like what's that token up there on the freebooter? So three go to the inverter on the right. Looks like that guy's going to be coming forward.
And we're going to have the field marshal apparition. So here comes the apparition moves. Right. Swing around. Obviously, he's not facing that way, but his, his big old macro pummeler getting in the way. Mm -hmm. So he's going to hang out there. Comes the second apparition move, Just moving up forward. And, uh, I don't believe that Aurora has put up uh, Arcane Might at the moment, which used to be called Transference for those who are Mark II veterans. And that allows basically friendly faction non Warcaster Warrior models to spend focus points on her to boost melee attack or melee damage rolls. That'll help with the, the lower pow on the uh, obstructors if they try to take on those nomads. I think he's waiting for next round to get that going. Maybe. I think right now he's just hoping the inverters can do all the work. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Let's see what's going to happen here. Again, you have to remember you got, you got this force. That's This force is going to be pretty critical in terms yeah. of just shutting off a lot of the through lanes here. So you have this, this narrow choke point here and then if you the want to go up and down to the objectives. And then otherwise you're coming through this here right. or you're going around the wizard house. So these two pieces alone really dictate the flow of the battle because you only have a couple of Yeah, little of entry channels points. of engagement. Yeah. And controlling those channels, if you can do it, is going to be pretty key. See a quick measurement on Aurora's My expectation uh, would be that the uh, the clockwork army is going to be uh, taking up a lot more time in general. There's there's certainly a lot more models. Although Jesse did really well in his first turn, like that was a fast. He's, he's fast. Yeah, it was a fast first turn for how much stuff is there. I don't know if. Kind of depends on what Aurora's army can get to this turn. If eleventh hour is going to come off, I don't see this being a feat turn though. The parry would be kind of useful. But the reposition five isn't going to net you a ton because you're not going to be able to really retreat behind some of that line of sight blocking stuff. Right. So what's happening up on the north side of the table I think there? right now he's looking at where to position the angels. That center angel has the is not engaged right now. So okay. I think he's kind of trying to figure out where. So he wants to make sure that the angels can get behind the eliminators because right. right now those eliminators are, you know, def 17. Ouch. Uh, yeah, it's, it's not insignificant. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I've been murdered by those guys before, too. Oh, they're, they're pretty good. <laughs> they're pretty good. If nothing else, they're really good at being annoying. Yes. Eliminators. So. Daughters of the of, Flame. Uh, Daughters of the Flame. Any, any of those. Not quite as good as Eliminators, <laughs> no, but there are more of them. you get more of them, of them. Yeah. yeah. There are far more of them. All right, so here we go. It needs a nine to hit. Misses. So we got a little. Needs a nine here. Little blade dance duel going on over here. Two damage. So that eliminator does get stabbed, but lives. And last one misses with authority. So that ends that. Apparently, people on the Twitch chat uh, are are wondering um, what Makeda's voice sounds like. <laughs> I, I that's a good question. Um, you know, I think it's probably a little hoarse. Little like a little hoarse or a lot hoarse? Just a little bit. I mean, she's still got to be able to get her voice out. She got to be able to project. Well, yeah, but is it like is it really gravelly? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, like yeah. she's just been down in whiskey and chain smoking <laughs> for years. <laughs> Well, you know, she's been fighting a lot. She might have some, like, neck scars. She's neck scars? You never know. Is she, like, the worst fighter in the world? How do you get neck scars? <laughs> Venter? Does that just mean death? <laughs> Not if you transfer. She's a warcaster. I thought, like, you just transfer those away. If, and if, you don't scar up after you transfer. Well, that 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 hasn't been definitively oh, shown. Oh, I see. I see. you got to be able to get battle scars, because you don't look cool unless you have battle scars. Well, maybe that's the stuff you don't transfer. <laughs> sure, sure. Or they could just be like ritual scars. I feel like it could be stabs you in the neck. Oh, ritual scars? Yeah. I see. 
Mm. Mm. <laughs> I don't know if I'm down with the next scars. That's, <laughs> no? That's all I'm saying. I just don't think she's smoking or drinking that much. So I was just trying to give no? you a method. Do, do the scorn have like a like a tobacco kind of like? We haven't in? we haven't really shown that. Although I have to think. I that, mean, that would be pleasurable for them. So well, that's probably the thing. Not. No, no, but I do think in the that eastern region, there's kind of that area around the river. Yeah. Um, where where all of the the what what exists of scorn agriculture is from. Hmm. There could be some scorn tobacco. It's probably. Really bad for you, and I think they probably just guzzled pure tar. Like that's <laughs> it. It's just sure. All right, so it looks like Fiora or Aurora, Fiora Aurora, whatever Aurora, <laughs> Aurora is uh is gonna pop her feet this turn. Oh. The token is on the table. He's measuring it out quite a bit. All right. <laughs> so her, remind me again on on how her feet work. She All did right, parry. So, so her feet grants everything in her control range parry. And then it gives them reposition five. So and you can do that. You get to um, kind of strike and fade. I so, see. So reposition is as long as you don't fail a charge or run, at the end of your activation, you get to make a five-inch move. Right. Or an X an X inch move. But with her, specifically, it's five. doesn't look like he's got that many things I, I in mean, charge distance, though, right? Unless you're going to try to use it to, you know, strike forward. Although she has, does she have a spell that uh, augments... Uh, the range that you can reach. I can't so she remember. does have aerogenesis. Aerogenesis, right? Which says that the spellcaster and friendly faction warriors are uh, beginning their activations in control range, gain plus two inches of movement when advancing, and they gain flight. So they so, might be able to get some stuff. So in she there. certainly can. She can bump those guys up pretty well. They'll go to speed seven, ten on the charge with reach two, two inch, two inch range in their melee weapons. Um, you know, it's it's pretty good. It's pretty good. So we're gonna try to finish off those eliminators. It looks like. So the obstructors are gonna press forward and charge in. We'll just get some quick measurements here based on facing. Of course, Jesse trying to get as many as he can in the back. Is that a forest on the northern side I also? I believe it is. Okay. It should be, just based on the fact that it had trees the, on it to begin with. Yeah, the with. type of terrain. But they removed all the trees, so who knows? Right. It's difficult to say. Also something the Convergence is prone to doing is removing all the trees. That's... Is that? I thought that was retribution. <laughs> well, no. We like to show the retribution art with trees on fire, but they actually have a lot of living, non-on-fire trees in their homeland. Hmm. I see. <laughs> so they just don't like other people to have trees. Yes. Basically, they're just spiteful toddlers. <laughs> well, and I, I, I like to imagine in the art, it's other people setting their trees on fire, ergo making them angrier. Oh, I see. I see. But why are they always standing, like... Near With the fire, the fire trees. behind them. Well, you look like they you set look, the fire. You look cooler if you have fires behind you. Right. So they set the fire to look cool, and then they walked forward. <laughs> right. and They're like, "Stop burning our stuff." <laughs> but yeah, I think uh, in uh -huh. the in in the world of the kudos to you, y'all the hands. Yes, those trees were eliminated. <laughs> they were eliminated. In the world that the great work would usher in, where the convergence turns yeah. Kane into a clockwork mechanism, there are no trees. Oh, I see. Or I see. clockwork trees. Oh, so we have Charles taking... What's going on? Looks like a free strike, maybe? So... Admonition. Admonition. All right. So we had an admonition go off after a dodge. Okay. And dodge was granted by uh, Magnus's spell. Ah, okay. Is that bullet dodger? Bullet dodger, I believe. Yes. Yep. Very, bullet dodger. Very nice spell. So he moved dodge. That triggered uh, that triggered admonition, which was placed on the inverter. So an Eliminator finally gets brought down by a bunch of Teleflails. Just clubbed to death like a baby seal. <laughs> That's rude. 
Are there seals in the Iron Kingdoms? I think so. You think so? Yeah, maybe they're probably up, like monstrous, like up on giant the, seals. Yeah, they they would have to be a little toothier and and nasty. Do they have bone spurs? Yeah, bone spurs. Like and you, well, and you could have blighted seals. Um, blighted seals? Yeah, like among horrifying. the the, the, shard, the northern those things just flubbing towards you. The northern oh, shard, oh, <laughs> nor, oh. northern shard islands with some blighted seals coming in for you. We'll see. We'll see how you can handle clubbing some blighted seals. I don't think I would go clubbing for blighted <laughs> seals. I would just avoid that. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. I'd be like, leave that seal alone. It looks monstrous. <laughs> All right, so reposition five happening on the uh, obstructors that just charged. Okay. You can see them using that. Oh yeah. To position backwards a little Get, bit. Getting into back arcs and things. Yep. And they also have flights, so that's why one of them was able to move. Uh, through Iris and not take a free strike because they have parry right now from Aurora's feet. So she makes things that can't fly also fly? Yes. She's the, she's the Newman of Aerogenesis. <laughs> you made that name up, so I assume you know what that means. I don't think I made, makes I don't think fly, I made that up. I, yeah. I was not responsible for that. But that sounds like a cop-out <laughs> right there. You're like, I'm going to make up but these yeah, words. She, she is able to, she has made breakthroughs in flight technology. I'm not sure exactly what she's Are they called springs, doing. Doug? Does she just attach springs no, to their no. feet? And she just pushes no. the button and they go, Poof. It's more so anti. Look, I can make them fly. Uh, no, Woo! no, no. Anti gravity. We're, we're, we're talking more rejecting yeah, those are gravity called itself. It's just <laughs> springs, indeed. It's just attached to springs to their feet. Like, so they just have some springs in their boots that they get to yeah, use they're once. Just, they're preloaded springs. She pushes <laughs> sure. the button, they bounce up. Well, Everyone's honestly, like, that is so smart. That is more practical. <laughs> that does remind me of one of my favorite convergence arguments with Jason Souls. Oh where he was trying to make the argument that the convergence killed things in the most efficient way possible, <laughs> which I said was patently untrue right. with the various buzzsaw did, device, did you, did the you, severing swarms and so on. I mean, yeah, so you on. should just immediately point out reductors. <laughs> yes. <laughs> They're filled with mechanical bees. <laughs> yes. How, how can we kill our enemies? Let's send Thousands a bunch of, of mechanical tiny bees. little mechanical bees that our priests will make and then... I like one to use. imagine the priest that has to go with the push broom after and just collect them all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, they do recycle a lot. Clearly, clearly. The Enigma Foundry is little, little to be known. So how are you feeling about this feat turn so far? Well, so f I mean, he's using, again, what we're seeing here is a great push forward. So yeah. like Pagani talked about a little bit before, you've got, you've got, you've literally have convergence models in like the backfield now right. of Magnus's army. They're well past the zone. Um, those nomads are going to have to figure out what to do with them. You can't just like let those guys run around back there. Yeah, even it's if they definitely can't gotten really pretty you. chaotic. So he's got a lot to chew through before he can even get there. Now the one difference here is that unless those Enigma Foundries start to run forward really fast, he's kind of put that unit of obstructors and those angels out of safety distance. Right. Now, do you and, think... Uh, and if he moves too far forward, again, he's got a lot of bodies in the way, but he does have to be a little wary that those Enigma Foundries don't get too close to the action, or he's going to lose them, and that's going to start to swing everything around. Do you think uh, Magnus is going to feet right back at it, try to control their movement next round? Maybe. I mean, Killbox certainly counterfeiting here could be, could be useful. Um, I think it depends on what he can clear out, really, yeah. or which way he goes. I could certainly see him, you know, depending on... Aurora's position, she's pretty centrally located and safe. So, like, you might cut off the two sides and force them to basically, like, not be able to funnel to center. Right. That could be a possibility. It really just depends Man, on how the rest of this turn so plays out. So many but convergence but models. So many bodies right now, yeah. <laughs> Even tramples aren't really going to help you too much there. you got a knocked down nomad. So you got the Freebooter, and the Freebooter got macro pummeled, slammed back, knocked over the Nomad. Freebooters can't be knocked down.
Yeah, plenty of craziness going on here. You surprised not to see any uh, colossals or battle engines on this in this with these lists? Um, y you know, taking a galleon with Magnus can be a popular choice. Yeah, but not really Magnus two, I don't think. Yeah, that's true. He doesn't have the snipe. He doesn't have you know Magnus one has a lot going. Yeah, for him Magnus one like more more about that. Bumping up those those uh, important battle group models. Right. But uh, certainly you're seeing now, you talked a little bit earlier about how many models Jesse had to move, the, the amount of time it would eat off yeah, his clock. Yeah, he's definitely eating up the time Now faster. that he's doing stuff, rolling dice, and uh, having to kind of plan out his activations, you can see the clock kind of winding down pretty fast. I've never done very well with large number of model lists myself. That's because you have to tell a story about each single one of them. <laughs> no, like, no. It doesn't work when I you just, have to write a chapter in each, I, each soldier's life. I overthink everything. It's Private like, especially Jim on like moving joined things. Joined the army at a tender <laughs> that age of 14. That doesn't happen. He failed miserably at the physical examination the first time. <laughs> that but through grit and vigor, decided <laughs> to push his way through to make it into the famed long gunner unit, the 43rd <laughs> Red Bald Neck Words. No, that doesn't happen. <laughs> that is exactly what I've played you before. That is that exactly is, what happens. That is not what happens. And Although. I did, th this was like, I'm going to move this model. And then it's like, 